Hello guys, so we are welcome to another edition of Mr. Jenny Piano Lesson. This is the week two of the lesson. So we'll do a few recap of the previous week what we did. Um, we talked about some technologies, the pitch, the tempo, the key signatures and so on and so forth. We also talked about some various symbols we use to represent the notes on the staff. Remember we talked about the semi break. We said the semi break has four beats, meaning that you press and hold for four seconds. We have the minimum, which has the two beats. We have the crochet, which has one beat, quaver, half beat, semi quaver, quarter beat, of which we explained that. We also talked about the clef. We, we, we even have it here. We talked about the clef. We have two main types of clef. We have the treble clef and the bass clef. Today, we are coming to talk about something that will add up to, to it. Coming to talk about the clefs. Yes, one. You can pause it. Okay. The staff. The staff. Now, anytime we talk about staff in music, you can represent it with your palm. Okay, so a staff consists of five lines and four spaces. That is a staff. Five lines and four spaces. So in sheet music, you see five lines. Two, three, four, and five. So we have five lines here. This is the staff. Now, earlier on in week one, we said the clef, the treble clef and the bass clef qualifies the staff. This staff is an empty staff. So until we put a clef on it, let's put a clef on it. Now the clef has qualified the staff, so now the staff is a treble staff. I can draw another staff down here. It's also an empty staff. Now let me put a clef on it. It becomes what? The base staff. As simple as it is. So the staff itself is empty, but once there is a clef on it, So the clef is qualifying the staff. Now in music, in piano, we have what we call the signs and symbols, as well as the names. So we have the lyrics for the congregation and the choir, and we have the signs and symbol. Can you pause for a second? That's what I'm, I'm trying to explain. That we, the organists and the pianists, we are interested in the, in the signs and symbols, as well as the lines. That is the staff. So you see, we have the treble clef on it. So it becomes a treble staff, right? Then we have the bass clef on it. So it becomes a bass staff. So we, the pianists and the keyboardists, we are interested in the staff. Whereas the congregation and the choir, they are interested in the lyrics. That is the words. So as you are playing, you are focusing on this. And the person singing is focusing on this. That is how amazing it is. So today, we will explain each and every line. Now, each and every line and space has a name. Now, in music, we don't use words to express the names, but we use alphabets. Guess what? We use the first seven alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. So these are the seven alphabets we use in music. The first seven alphabet. Now, each of these alphabets represents a line or a space. Remember, a staff, as we said, comprises of five lines and four spaces. Now, each of these alphabets represents a line or a space. And they follow alphabetical order. So if I'm able to give you a clue of the first line, automatically you know the first space. Automatically, you know the second line because it follows up the scale. Now, let me use a semi break to represent the lines. So, we have a semi break here, another semi break here, another semi break here, semi break, semi break, semi break, semi break, semi break, and semi break. So, all I'm saying is that if I'm able to give you the name of this first line, the name of the first line is called E. 
So if this is E, what will be this? What's your name? Favor. Favor. Favor, what will be this? Um, D. I, I forget that one. From E, we go to F. 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 From F? G. G. From G? H. Because we don't have H, because it ends at the seventh, we we'll start from the beginning. So now we come back to A. B. Then we go to B. B. C. D. E. e. And F. And F. That is how simple it is. Because we use only the first seven alphabets. So once we end, we start again. So you see, I gave you one clue, and we are able to find the rest. That is how simple it is for you to read the stuff. Now let's pick out only the lines out. So only the lines. The from the lines, let's bring out the lines out. So the first line is E. The second line is J. So the third line is B. The fourth line is D. D. And the fifth line is F. F. Now, earlier on, we said the treble clef is also known as the J clef. With the help of the names, can we explain why it is known as a G clef? Because it's, the point starts from the G. Exactly. That is correct. Because when you are drawing the treble clef on the staff, you start from line G. G. So we say the treble clef is also known as a G clef. So when picking out um, the lines out, you see that we have the first line to be E, G, B, D, and F. So forming an acronym with it so that we don't forget. We can say E stands for every. J stand for good, B stand for boy, B stand for deserves, F stand for favor. So that we don't forget. So every good boy deserves favor. Every good boy deserves favor. So every E is the first line. Boy, B, you know, that is how you get yeah. to we get it on our finger tips. Okay, this is universal. When I say universal, whether you are playing the trombone, whether you are playing the trumpet, whether you are playing the keyboard, whether you are playing the piano, the sax, you will still need this information. Okay. So you have to take it serious. Okay. Okay. Now let's bring out the spaces out. The spaces. So the first space is F, right? Yes. That's the first space, F. The second space, A. A. C. C and fourth space e. e. So this one is its own acronym. Eh? Okay. So anytime you think of face, you it should remind you of your travel stuff, the spaces. Okay. This will come very handy when we study uh, practicals. Because these names can be found on the keyboard. And that is what you are going to use to play the piece on the keyboard. So this is that for the travel. We are coming to do that for the base staff because the base staff is different from the treble staff. Okay. okay. So hope you've captured the treble. Yes. Okay. So I can clean it now. Yes. Don't worry, you you have the video, so you can watch it over and over again to understand it. So now we'll go to the base. It's very simple, okay? We are just applying some principles here. So, we'll draw our stuff. Five lines, four spaces, right? So, now we'll put our clef on. Now, we said the base clef is known as F clef. Why is it F clef? It's just from the line F. Exactly. Because when you are drawing it, you start from line F. And the two dots is in between line F. So which one is line F? This one. This one. The, the, the exactly. second one. So this is F. The same alphabetical order. If you know F, what will be this? G. If this is F, what will be this? G. G. What will be this? A. A. Then coming down, this time we are not climbing because we are coming down from F. What will be this? E. E. Beautiful. And what will be this? D. D. Then C. C. Oh, very simple. B. B. A. A. 
and we go back to F. Gene. Uh, Gene, yeah. Because if ended at A, we go back to G. So that is the arrangement. I just gave you one clue the F cliff, meaning that we start from line F and the dot is in between F. Now you were able to find the rest. Okay, I'm not saying that you should learn how to do all these computations. All you need to know is to know the various lines and the spaces. 